All right, everyone, welcome to another stop motion After Effects tutorial. I'm not going to number this tutorial because really it should go near the beginning of the series that I've made, kind of in the middle of one or in place of one in some ways. But today I want to talk about how to use raw files. And if you don't know what a raw file is, I'll explain a little bit as we go. So I've got a new After Effects project here. I'm just going to go Control I to import some footage. I'm going to go ahead and select camera raw files right here so that it's all we see. And you can see I've got tons of raw images here for some stop motions. I'm going to work on this shot right here. So you can see from this shot or from that raw picture all the way to this one is one shot. So I've got all of them selected. Now make sure you go over here to sequence options and press camera raw sequence. You want that checked. So camera raw sequence is checked import as footage. You should see all of the file names right here for all of the raw images you have selected and press import. So if you don't know what a raw file is, it's basically a much larger image file than a JPEG or a PNG. And the reason for that is it's not compressed allowing you to edit it. So you can see that After Effects automatically pulled up the camera raw editor here. And we've got all these options for editing it. So I purposely picked this one because um, this picture and the shot is kind of darker than I like. So you can see we've got Shockwave here, lots of shadows on him. You can't really make out the details of him. It's kind of dark and black in a lot of places. So this is the kind of shot that I love using the camera raw editing features for to kind of change the look of. So you see you've got exposure here. You can move that up and down and it would affect it as you expect. Uh, for this, I'm just going to go through the adjustments that I would make for this shot. So move up the exposure a little bit. Um, I like increasing the shadows a lot, especially for a shot like this, because you can see, you can see what that does. I'll turn that on and off here. Makes a big difference, um, especially like if you just want to kind of make it so you can see all the details of the toy or whatever you're making a stop motion of. Bringing up the shadows can be really helpful. And then I bring down the blacks to kind of just preserve some of that contrast to kind of make up for bringing up the shadows so much. Then you can, of course, play with Vibrance, which is really cool sometimes, not here. You've got a lot of options like uh, Clarity, which kind of just adds like a sharpness to it. Um, texture, which does something similar. And you've got a lot more options here where you can actually play with, you know, what the shadows look like, what specific tones look like, etc. But I'm not going to explain every bit of this editor. You can totally find some tutorials that just talk about what a raw image is and all the ways you can edit it. For now, I really just want to show you the workflow of how to use this in a stop motion. So I've made the changes I want for the first image, and I'm just going to press OK. And that's it. So you want to make sure that every image you selected, you want to apply all the changes that you made to the first one to every single image in that sequence. Because what it's done is it's created a sequence file right here, and they're all going to have those adjustments that we just made in the camera raw editor. So I'm going to take the sequence file and drag it into a new composition, just like that. I'm going to turn the resolution down to quarter because these are huge files and it's going to be really slow. But what this has done is basically just make this sequence of images one piece of footage. So I could scrub through here and you would see all the different pictures in the sequence. And like I said, this is really slow. And the next thing I want to talk about is using a proxy because pretty much any camera you use is probably going to start to go really slow processing these raw images. So using a proxy can really speed up your workflow. It, it makes things a lot faster without decreasing the quality. So to create a proxy, all you do is click the piece of footage, the image sequence that we just imported, right click on it, go to create proxy movie. And you can see what that does is it opens the render queue and this item here is a proxy. So what a proxy is, is it's basically just a low quality version of a piece of footage while you edit and add visual effects, you don't need it to be at its top quality. You can work with a low quality version just so that your computer moves a bit faster. And then when you go to export the final product, you can turn off the proxy and it will render it full quality. So just leave these settings as they are. You can change the name and location and then go ahead and press render. And I'm gonna skip over the process of this rendering, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so the proxy is done rendering. If you look over here, you'll see a composition it created. This composition is just what it made to render the proxy. You don't actually need it anymore. You can go ahead and delete it if you want, or you can leave it. Um, but you'll see this little square next to the piece of footage, the image sequence that we imported. 
And what that little square marks is that this is a proxy. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new composition with this proxy file now, which is for all intents and purposes, just like a regular piece of footage. So if I scroll through the proxy, you can see that it's processing the images a lot faster because it's basically turned it into an AVI file, right? If you remember before, it took forever just to pull up that one frame I scrubbed to in the original raw sequence, but this is a lot faster and it still looks really good. I mean, you can zoom in, you can see all the details. It, it looks pretty much just as good if you ask me. I can't really see it to be honest. And if you go into composition settings, you can see that it still has the original size of my raw file. So my original raw file was 6,000 by 4,000 and the proxy has retained its exact size. You can change the frame rate back to whatever frame rate you wanna work with. But yeah, it makes the file the same size. It makes it a lot easier to work with. And from here, you would just do things normally, right? You would just time remap, uh, put this in another composition to add the camera shake and reframe it into whatever size video you're trying to make. And it would all happen a lot faster. Now, when you're ready to render, all you have to do actually is click this little square once. And then you can see the icon changes here and we're back to this being the original raw sequence. So if I went back into this composition and tried to scrub, you can see it's taking a long time again because now it's pulling from the actual original raw sequence again. So right before you render, if you want to really make sure you know that you're getting maximum quality with the, uh, the original raw images, you can go ahead and turn off all the proxies. But as you can see, the proxies don't look bad at all by themselves. Um, I would forgive you if you forgot to turn it off because you can't really tell a difference in my opinion. Of course, if you're working with JPEG files or lower quality images, there might be a bigger difference between the proxy and the original. But in this case, I can't really tell. But yeah, that's about it to this tutorial. I would really just wanted to show you what it's like to work with raw images and also with the sequence. You can do these sequences with JPEGs as well. In my first tutorial, I said to turn off image sequences just because I thought it was valuable to select all the images and drag them into a composition so you could really see what was happening as far as one image coming after the other. But you know, if you're comfortable with that concept and you just want to keep things much neater, I do recommend having import as sequence selected so that you can just have one piece of footage for every shot if you're importing by shot um, here in your project pane. It keeps things a lot cleaner. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful. I plan to do more After Effects stop motion tutorials, so if you're interested, please subscribe and stay tuned for more of those. And yeah, thanks for watching.